You know, the Bible say, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I just ask him to create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, I'm not no preacher or anything, but it's all about purifying your body, keeping your heart clean, keeping your heart pure. Thank you, God, for keeping a clean heart in me. I ask for your blessing. Amen. Kings all time created. He can get you. first coin the phrase of dying empty, making sure that you're giving it a hundred percent all the way. I didn't even realize Chadwick Boltman really was the kind of the same thing. He said, you know, when I face God, I want to, you know, tell him that I utilize all my gifts and talents for his glory and for the edification of his people. So I'm I'm kind of that same way. I I you know, people like, girl, I watch you everywhere. You doing everything. I said, well, you know, when I retired from teaching, I said, God, if you just bless me to retire from this here, I will go hard in the paint, you know, like the sports. Yes. I'm going hard yes. in the paint for three to five years. And so I'm on heading into year three. And so, oh. I, I mean, I'm really, uh, I'm 57 now. I've got, uh, you know, three more years if the Lord hadn't returned and you know, 60, I'll, I'll see what God says and then we'll, you know, back it down, slow it down or shift gears into something else. Oh no, I remain open. <laughs> I, I remain open, but you know, that, that whole, this is okay. This is enough. This is really, I, I don't uh, aspire to that. I don't ascribe to that. And I don't resemble that remark. Uh, I'm always wanting to go from good to great and to, uh, really uh, be all that he intended for me to be. Yes, that's rich. It, it really, your seeds are being planted more places. I mean, you're just not putting them here. You're scattering them. And I oh, want no. you to know. They go abroad. They go girl, abroad. And they're received. Yeah. And I praise Thank God you. for that. You said something else uh, on one of your uh, pages or something about a virtual book club. I've been in a book club, started one in 05 when my mother passed. I needed to travel. And I thought now, since we are in the house a whole lot, what is a virtual book fair? How do you... The, the, okay, so, so, okay, so first off, um, my uh, online bookstore. So, you know, that was the, the one of the major things for me because I do, you know, when you said you see me at table, I enjoy all of that. Meet new people, how you doing, asking them questions, laughing, talking. I enjoy that. I'm a extrovert. I do have time times in my life where I am an introvert and I don't want to talk to anybody, but uh, naturally I'm an, intro an extrovert. I, hi, you know, my mother, my parents said I would be up calling for them, you know, and not crying. <laughs> just like, Hey, I'm awake. Come on. Another day, you know, a uh, flight attendant asked my parents, that's when you could walk the people all the way to the gate. They walked me all the way to the gate one time. And they were like, is she like that all the time? It's so early in the morning. It was like early six o'clock flight. My parents said, "Every since she's born, this is this is, her. <laughs> this is this is this is her. The smile, the hi, hello, yeah. Ever since from birth. So, you know, it. it uh, so when we moved from the in-person space, you know, I, I, I'm one of those people that can see a shift or move really quickly. Like, wait, what? So I, I shifted gears." really very, very quickly. I started getting refunds from all the tables that I had. Some of them I didn't, but most of them, they gave me refunds back. You know, I had the rearranged plane tickets, cancel hotels. I was thinking, okay, so where's the emphasis going to be? It's going to be in what I call, and I'm writing a book about it now, of course, virtual online and digital space of, of making sure that you have, I was already, I had a website. I've got three websites. I've got all kinds of stuff already there. But that wasn't the focus and emphasis because I'm such an in-person person that I was like, well, okay, that's kind of secondary. When you meet me and then they say, do you have a website? Yeah, go there. But now 
we have to, the virtual, digital, and online space has made that have to be at the forefront. That has to be at the beginning. So um, now I, I was hosting with all the children's books. I was going doing ver, uh, a in-person book fairs. I had these schools that were scheduled, just like the other uh, company I'm not going to name, but y'all know who the book fair people are, the number one multi-billion dollar company, but I was coming for them. So that was what 2020 was for me, but that had to go from in-person to online. So if you go to RoystonRoyalBookstore.com, Royston, that's my last name, R-O-Y-S-T-O-N, Royal, R-O-Y-A-L, bookstore.com that's my store so you have the opportunity to if a book club wanted to go there and say we want 20 copies or 25 copies of a certain book you don't have to to pay the retail price just contact me and i'll take care of it and we can get a discount for that or if you if you're a school that says okay we still want book fairs but we you know you can't come in the building I have all of my children's books. So you would contact me, BK Royston Publishing at gmail.com or just on the contact on the, on the website, the contact form say, um, the week of this week, uh, February, 2021, we wanna have the ability to have a virtual book fair. Everything that's purchased, all the children's books, 20% of what is raised or what is sold goes back to that school. So I, I offer virtual book fairs as well as the, the book clubs. If you want to say we want eBooks, no, we want printed author signed copies. We can do that too. So That's so nice. say it's, my, it's my book. It's my business. I run it like I want to Hi, reach out to me and tell me what you want. and We can make it happen. Hey, but, uh, but it's one place that, you know, kind of everything is there and, um, you know, has the ability to be able to do that. I have a couple of friends that have entertained the thought of writing a book. The story is so interesting. I'm like, you need to write. So where could they contact you in the process? Do you have edit and publish or is that two separate do everything things? from Go A to Z, it. everything all between. Um, I, what I, I always tell people, I help you from the idea to Amazon, everything Ooh. in between. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, I have editors, I have illustrators, I have formatters, I have the whole nine yards. So I, I help you from getting it out of your head to Amazon. That's where That's we go. Amazing. That's so amazing. So if you want to, yeah, it, yeah, time, years, 12 years, remember. Yeah. So uh, if you're, if you need to have a conversation with me, go to talkwithroyston.com. That's talk, T-A-L-K, with W-I-T-H, Royston, R-O-Y-S-T-O-N.com. That's my calendar. So um, that has all... Uh, all to be all. It's on Eastern time zone. So if by any chance you're listening to this and you're outside the Eastern time zone, make sure to make that adjustment. Um, but yes, okay. uh, my calendar wow. is on the Eastern time zone. So feel free to go there. So my books are at RoystonRoyalBookstore.com and then my calendar is TalkWithRoyston.com. So wow. uh, now I do have a website, BKRoystonPublishing.com. But talkwithroyston.com will get you to me or a member of my team, and uh, we can take care of you from there and get you started. Uh, we can also point you in the direction, and you're like, I need a class. I do have classes that are coming up. I'm not going to name dates because I don't know when this is going to air, but um, I always have uh, classes on the horizon, or I even have pre recorded classes where you take the course two or three o'clock in the morning if you want to. Uh, but if you want to have a live class with me, uh, I have those scheduled at bkworsonpublishing.com and then classes. Click on classes and you'll see the current classes or when oh. they're going to be offered next. So that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't I'm a think. witness that you are reachable and a sweetheart and a sweet spirit Thank and you. anointed. I Thank have you. another question. If Thank knowing you. what you know now, if you could give your 16 year old self some advice during this period or any period, just 16, what would you tell her? <laughs> um, you know, I'm back to your original uh, question. You are good enough. That, okay. That's number one. And then um, secondly, uh, don't compare yourself to anybody else because oh. you're one of a kind. Uh, mm. You know, there's not many people like you and 
And uh, no offense to anybody who's thin, but don't worry about the skinny girl. That's not going to matter. It's all going to matter about your personality, your spirit, and uh, your skill. Your wow. personality, your spirit, and your skill. Because I know a lot of people who may have more skills than I do, but their personality cancels them out. Their character cancels them out. Their integrity cancels them out. Their ability to adjust and switch gears cancels them out. Their ability not to hear God and to see and to do what he says cancels them out. So, you know, don't, don't worry about the, those things that you focus on are frivolous. Stay focused, stay driven. And I tell anybody else that same thing. It, 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 your integrity, your character, your personality is key. And then your ability to continue to um, change gears, switch gears right through in this season we're in right now, that is the difference of being in business and not in business. Wow. That's the, the difference of thriving and not thriving. That's the difference of, you know, those manufacturing companies that were manufacturing something else. And then all of a sudden, click them, a manufacturing mask and, and shields. And that, that's what happens. That's what makes the difference in people being able to, as the scripture says, read the handwriting on the wall mm. and being able to interpret. You know, there, uh, I, I cannot remember the group, but there was, um, oh shoot, I cannot th think of it. But the phrase that comes to mind because they knew the times and the seasons. They could tell there was a group, specifically the prophets, they could um, see the seers. They could tell mm. the times and the seasons that were in and how to, uh, as they say in church, govern yourselves accordingly. <laughs> You get, I mean, you've just got to do that. You've got to be able to to switch because that's the difference in your livelihood. I, I had a conversation with a business owner and she said, I basically just went into depression. I said, you didn't communicate with it? No, I, I, I just couldn't handle it. So I just went in depression and basically crashed on her couch and smoked and drank the whole time because she just, she could not come out of it. And, um, you know, she saw it was bleak, but, you know, she couldn't, she didn't reach mm -hmm. out enough to say, okay, help, help, uh, help me figure it out. Help, oh, me, help me switch, help me, help me adjust. Give me some ideas and I'll implement them. But, you know, when you don't reach out, when you don't ask for help, when you don't ask somebody to pray for you, if you don't go to a professional, you don't get a mentor, you don't get a coach, you don't get somebody to uh, help you with that. Um, you're subject to have a lot of down days and dark days, but you know, you got to look to the heels of coming your help and all your help comes from the Lord. Girl. But in addition to that help comes from the Lord, he's given us people. He's given us places. He's given us things. He's given us ideas. And um, sometimes, you know, Jesus used to ask the people, so what do you want? You know, and he wouldn't even touch him. He wouldn't do nothing. He said, what do you want from me? Mm -hmm. And they would have to do their part to tell him, I want to see you. Uh, my daughter is vexed with a devil. I, you know, I touched the hem of his garment in my faith. And there you go. There's something that you have to do. Psalms tells us whatsoever a man doeth shall prosper. So there's some things you got to kick in gear and some things that you've got to do and some changes you have to make as we enter into this new, whatever this new thing is, whatever this thing God is making you stop and think and what do I really want? And realize you could die. Mm -hmm. And even at 57 that I am right at this moment, I could die. So what am I going to do to live? What Ooh. am I going to do with the every day that I wake up, the breath I'm breathing, the, the life he's given me, what am I going to do with it? Wow. And That's if good. I don't do what he says, what, I mean, you know, what am I going to do when I face him and I want all these streets of gold and mansions and all that but i didn't do nothing with the what he gave me down here wow why he gonna give me all the crowns and all that? no you can't you can't you know you go to reward that's after you worked <laughs> work <laughs> out your soul salvation with fear and trembling you know you gotta work for it and you know i know you don't earn salvation no that's free but everything else you're going to work for it Ooh. you know you got to put some effort and time and and, and i know a lot of people want a lot of things for free, but it doesn't happen that way. I'm sorry. I wish, yeah. I, wish I had another 
as they say, message to tell you, but that's not the this not the one, not today. Girl. Ooh, that's rich. That is rich. Before I ask you this last question, while you were talking and and my first remembrance of you, uh, you in my spirit right now while you were talking, I'm like, that's a sister Barney, Barnabas, because <laughs> Barnabas was an encourager. Yeah, deal with Paul after Saul, you know. And so when I see you from here on, I may not call you. Sister Barney, but girl, <laughs> you have a gift of exhortation that won't wait. I have been encouraged. Sometimes you don't even know you're not encouraged until somebody encouraged you. You're like, oh, that lifted. Oh, that that took root. So praise God. Girl, I can get excited. Ah, okay. How look, mm. Whew. Okay. The uh, my last question, I'm getting emotional because you sure have, I didn't even girl i hope well you the the thing about it is is that when you go through things you should come out with something you should not come out empty-handed just like i've told people about this global pandemic don't don't let god shut us in close us in with family loved ones or even alone and come out empty-handed he didn't let the children of israel do it when they came out of egypt he's not gonna let us do it but we've got something we had to do they had to literally go and get the gold, pack it up, put it on the beast so that it would be ready the next day, uh, you know, when the, the blood had passed over and uh, uh, the Pharaoh said, get out of my kingdom, bye, go, y'all are a headache. So it's the whole point of, you know, what do you, my prayer for everybody listening to this is to ask God clearly, what am I supposed to get out of this? What am I supposed to be doing that I'm not supposed to be doing? Now, everybody's not supposed to establish a business. Everybody might not even be uh, ready to write that book. But there's something that he's asking for you to, to do. There's something that he gave you time and opportunity to do, to be able to do and get accomplished. So what is that? And don't come out without it. Don't leave this year. You've got three more months. You've got so many days to finish it, finish this year. Because there's a reason Wow, we and we don't know what's coming next on the next horizon. We don't know if it's another uh, pandemic. We don't know if it's another virus. We don't have no clue. So therefore, while you know, as the old folks used to say, "Why the blood is yet running warm in your veins?" <laughs> yeah, I'm old school. I'm sorry, but while the blood is yet running warm in your veins, get done with your sp- at least start. <laughs> Even if you don't get it all finished, at least start it and leave it for the next generation as a testament and your legacy. Oh, praise God, Sister Barney, Sister Julia. I know your name, <laughs> but in my spirit, I'm like, oh, I need to make sure I'm on your page a whole Well, lot. it's just like, you know, once you, I mean, you know, I, you know, I don't even have, I just told you part of the testimony. I haven't told you a lot of the other things that you endure and that you go through for his glory and for his praise that you have to come out with. You know, you're going to be better. You're going to be bitter. You're going to be you know, uh, worse for it, you know, when the enemy comes for you, what are you going to do? Are you going to make sure that he's able to utilize you for the next generation or for someone else? Or are you going to be a waste? Are you going to be a a fruit that died on the vine without being Mm. able to be worth utilizing? You know, you've got to make sure that you uh, uh, get yourself together and and stay intact despite of what you go through so that he can use you because he can't he doesn't like that whole bitter and that anger thing and all that he can't he can't use that now it may make you angry when you it may hurt your feelings when you think about it but when it's all said and done it we're back to romans eight twenty eight. all things is working together for the good all things everything it doesn't feel good it didn't look good it wasn't good but it all is going to work for your good. So stirring it all up in that pot and putting it in that oven because we've all been cooked one way or the other and come out and be edible and be uh, available for the master's good use. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. One um, thing I'm going to ask the last thing is one attribute of the Lord that you would highlight during the season. And something else made me think while you were talking, I'm like, I'm not only talking to a believer, I'm talking to a knower. And it's just a blessing when you talk to a knower because you can't take what they know. Now, you might switch what they believe. Mm -hmm. So praise God. Girl, I'm falling in love with you even the more. God has set me up. 
Uh, so one highlight, this season of your life, one attribute you would highlight of the Lord this season of your life mm -hmm. and, and just put it on the billboard, what would that be? The Lord speaks and thy servant hears. Um, having the ability to know God's voice is so critical and so key. Even though, you know, there's a lot of voices going on, a lot of things, you know, there's a whole lot of chatter going on and a, a whole lot of people saying uh, things, but being able to hear the voice of the Lord is really, really so key. And so uh, in this season and being able to know what he's saying and know what uh, the time that we're in and the direction for each individual person, because there is a general direction for all of us. But individually, he has some things he wants specifically for us to do and for you to do uh, specifically. Praise so God. that's my prayer for everyone is that they learn to hear the voice of the Lord. They learn to recognize uh, his direction, uh, his opportunity that he's given you to be able to um, fulfill your purpose and move toward destiny. And of course he speaks through people, he speaks through events, he speaks through music, through song, through uh, the preach word, you know, it's different. Uh, me, I'm very fortunate and honored and privileged that I do hear his audible voice. Uh, and it is very, um, sometimes he's yelling, so you make sure I, I don't hear, I hear it. And then sometimes it's a still small voice. So sometimes, you know, it just all depends on what I need at that particular point in time. But I, I, I do hear that. I don't consider myself special in that because sometimes he speaks to other people and then uh, confirms what he said through that person, I've already told you. So it's to be confirmational uh, through his word, through, um, you know, through other people, the man of God, the woman of God, it should be confirmational. But um, I think over time, not only just this season, but over the last at least 20 years of my life, that is what um, I had to do with Abraham. I had to come out for my kindred and my mm -hmm. country and my people. And um, I had to walk that walk, uh, the backside of the mountain in a, another place and time. And uh, it was rough, you know, but as they say, when I came out, I know him for myself. I, it's not what somebody told me. It's not what my parents said. There are some things that you will never be able to take from me because I now know him for myself. And so Therefore, you know, being able to hear his voice and know him from yourself is really that. And of course, you know, I come from very fundamentalist, apostolic, Pentecostal background. So they told you everything. There was a rule, how you gonna dress, how you gonna look, what you could wear, cause you couldn't wear, and what you couldn't do and where you couldn't go and all that good stuff. Uh, but the, the thing about it is after a time, he said, I've got a place for you to go. I've got things for you to do. I got people for you to meet that they know not of. So therefore you cannot uh, take your foundation, hold on to your foundation, but there are some things and places and things and places and things I want you to do that they don't have a clue of because they don't have a, a point of reference for that. So it's outside the rules, outside the laws, outside of that, but you know, they're gonna know it was me in the end. I mean, you know, so. It was scary. It was frightening. It was, it was, it was a rough time to leave from everything. You know, I felt I kind of, I, you know, I'm not Abraham, so I didn't have a clue about that, but I understood what that meant when he said, you know, I'm going to take you to a country and a land. I'm going to show you outside from your kindred and all that. And it was, it was, even though I'm there, you know, even though I was still in the same area, I wasn't with them, but you know, Ooh. God has a way and he has a way of bringing everything kind of full circle back around and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, God is good. He is awesome. But that's that would be my biggest thing. Making right. sure you'd be able to hear him for yourself. No one praise him. God, praise God, praise God, praise God. I concur and, and I just thank you, sister, even more than you would ever know. And probably until you stand before him and he, he lays out all that you've done and all that how faithful you were because you didn't have to say yes. You yeah. didn't know me. But you said yes, and I and I and I'm so grateful. And, and if Healthy Heart can ever assist or do anything with this kingdom walk, 
that you this journey because I mean if I never see you again on this side I know it's ain't a belief I know I'm gonna see you over yonder oh yeah 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 Ooh, believe yeah. me I'll put, you, I'll put you on my foundation list don't worry Ooh, amen. <laughs> so keep keep the sister lifted up I will and, I will oh my god because it's you've just encouraged even the more and uh, please everybody follow her listen to her if you've got a book, I've talked to people, get in touch with her. I'm promoting her. If you know me, you know I wouldn't just say it to say it because I just don't say to say. So praise God for your walk. I praise God for Miss Debbie and Lil Janice bringing you over 10 years. And I praise God for your faithfulness. I can go on and on. But um, I will stop right here because mm, God is so faithful. So we say ta-ta from Cha-Cha and Sister Julia Ralston.